but do you have a real job? Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. But do you have a real job? We are here today with a special guest. He's an actor, an artist, and one of the stars of the hit show Trailer Park Boys up in Canada. We are here with Jacob Rolf, otherwise known as Jacob Collins in the show. How are you doing? You know what's happening, Mario? Nice Not to much, you, man. man. Thank you for uh, coming on. I know in the creative world, life gets busy. So I appreciate you making the time for uh, the podcast. You said you just got over COVID. How did that go? Are you feeling like almost normal again? Just getting over it. Um, much more normal today than I had previously. Um, I came down with it on Saturday night, but Sunday I was pretty much like, like fucked up. Yeah. Pretty bad. Uh, so I was fucked up for two nights and like one full day. And then I was by the second full day, I no longer had the aches and pains. And so I thought, oh, that wasn't so bad. But then I've been like totally like kind of weak and kind of fuzzy. I got mm -hmm. like, I kind of feel like I've got, like, I, I'm smoking better weed, but it's not always pleasant. Like I got to sort of sit down and take rest a lot. No, I, right. That's what I was too. I was like, yeah. every time I would stand up to like, oh, I could go eat or go get something to drink. And I would immediately be like, wow, I need to sit down right now. But today I've only, I think I only took one lie down nap. So, uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, maybe tomorrow you will only have like a half a lie down. And then, yeah, you'll be good by the eighth day or so. Uh, where are you at right now? Is that your workshop? Yeah, I'm just in my uh, studio, a.k.a. what used to be the living room. Hell yeah. This old house in Scotia. You're just letting me, I'm going to just turn this light up here a bit. Sorry, no, you're cool. Let's do this off the top. No, we can see you fine, though, either way. There, this might be a bit better. Hey, there we go. Well, we're much the same. <laughs> yeah, it's about the same. But yeah, I'm about to do something in my living room too. Cause like I, I'm in my studio here in my room, my second room, but I have a living room with no furniture in it at all. There's nothing in there. There's like a couple lamps just on the floor, but I'm about to do something in there. Cause when you got so much space, you may as well turn it into a big creative studio. And, and having lighting is important. But no. uh, I'm, I'm not very intuitive at it. Dude, the lighting is so yeah. hard. I don't know how I got this one as good as it is, it is, and it's not even that good. But yeah, lighting is well, terrible. Well, you're brighter than your background, so that's like... That's a plus, yeah. That's plus, yeah. That's. I, I'm still I, trying I, to figure it out. I, I realize I, uh, I got that backwards. No, one thing I learned is like being like kind of close and their heads like up here near the top of the video. And I don't know, it's weird. But I'm still working on some shit. Uh, either way, we got you here. I'm curious, I know you would do acting and stuff and uh, you were in Trailer Park Boys, but how did your acting career start as as a whole? Like, did your parents get you into acting or how old were you when we first started? Uh, I mean, the like the long story or like the long like history is uh, like in, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an actor, like sort of lots of kids like, oh yeah, actors are like you know, movie stars. All like, right. That's awesome. Like grade seven. In, in, in grade seven, in the summer before or after I went to this acting class, like uh, during the summertime, it's like, like a month long camp. And, you know, it was sort of fun there doing some stuff but at, at, at the end, we had to do this stage production. And I was so mortified, like having to act on stage. In front how of old were you? Other people. So yeah, grade, like grade seven. So like, I don't know how old are people in grade seven. Probably about 12 or something. Yeah. Sounds right. And at that point I realized like, Oh my God, you know, huge performance anxiety. There's a, you know, no way I want to be an actor. Like, and I, you know, I guess I moved on uh, to cop or something. Who knows at that, at that age, but uh, right. Uh, then I, uh, uh, yeah, so it was, it was off the radar completely. And then when I was 25 or so, it was back in the year 1999. So yeah, 25, I was living in Nova Scotia and working background on a movie there where I was asked to uh, go, um, sorry, <laughs> oh my God. On this movie, uh, one of the makeup ladies uh, or hair ladies was Mike Clattenburg's wife, uh, Anne-Marie. And so Mike Clattenburg's the original director and creator of the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, she knew he was looking for people to fill small roles at that point. And so yeah, she put us in contact and uh, the rest is history. That yeah. Was, yeah that was like before season one. Oh, really so you started at the very beginning yeah my, my first role is a small like a scene at the beginning of the first episode where uh ricky and cyrus meet each other and i'm there like they're they kind of oh, get in the their, gas station argument uh it's a convenience store right yeah yeah you filmed a lot of the scenes i don't know if it was a lot of scenes there i know season one you were there quite a bit 
how uh how are the interactions with the people because is that a closed down convenience store where nobody's allowed around it or no i mean when we're shooting they might not let try not to let people in but really like they're they're working in public places they have a convenient like a an agreement with the convenience store you know dude or dudette for sure but right uh, yeah no it's pretty uh so yeah, I mean, there'd be no people just walking in off the street while we're shooting, but uh, yeah, it's it's a live, you know, live set and like a live park in in general, where, like right. where we're doing stuff in the early days and then in in the later days as well. Yeah, and that's what makes it interesting, like a really interesting show, is because it's being filmed in such a live atmosphere. Because there's actual random people just around, and it's funny because do do you know? I don't know if you would even know specifics, but like. Do you know if any of the people in the background that weren't even involved in Trailer Park Boys, they were just bystanders or passersby? Did they ever? The show make is it pretty show? professional. Like, like everyone on on film is going to be like, like you know, like crew or you know, an actor or or background performer. It's possible somebody in the deep background or when they're doing stuff outside. Of course, it'd be like cars and stuff that might be random, I guess, mm-hmm. but. Uh, no, it's it's like a much more scripted and like you know planned set than to have random people just in it. It's possible back in like season one that might have happened, right? Or more or you know possibly, but uh, right. You no, know, that's not like the norm to my experience. No, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think so, but I was the way it's filmed, it almost appears that way. Well, yeah, that's I guess that's the idea that the mockumentary style is supposed to be sort of like you know. Um, what's the word a candid kind of you know style right so it's uh but yeah that's like that's part of the uh i guess a good directing or good like writing yeah the the writing and the acting is so insane in that show i think that's why it's so appealing to so many different people it's because it's just so well done on all aspects um i remember actually i don't know where i read this or heard a video but i read somewhere or heard something that trailer park boys was originally about bubbles and him being a cart boy and it was just going to be about him, Ricky and Julian doing cart stuff. Do you know anything about that or? No, I don't know. Like there's the original uh, black and white movie. Have you seen that where it's. I don't think I've seen the black and white movie. No. What's it called? Like it, it's not Trailer Park Boys exactly, but it's like. It was the precursor to Trailer Park Boys. So it's. Okay. Ricky and Julian are these pet assassins. They might not even be called Ricky and Julian, but like Rob and uh, JP. All right. Um, I don't know if uh, Mike Smith is in it. I, I haven't seen it in like 20 years. So I, I, I'm uh, working with uh, on, on fumes here. Mm-hmm. But uh, like Randy's in it, but he's just like a random dude. He's not Randy. And uh, so that was one like sort of early, you know, and different. It was based on, on that movie that I think uh, Trailer Park Boys got, you know, picked up by a network and 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 uh, developed but no i don't know anything about like other possible sort of storylines right is that movie available like online somewhere i believe it is gosh i don't know what it's called but it wouldn't be hard to find online yeah it just starts like black and white trailer park boys or something like yeah that. and it would be like in the late in the like mid to late 90s uh it's crazy I, how long ago that started i feel like the name's on the tip of my mind um uh, yeah well last year was like the 20th anniversary a of uh of the show being released and so that's uh that is a long time <laughs> right it's like a long Ooh. time right you're getting old man now we're all getting old uh but it's crazy how long no it's been around it. and it really just popped off i mean you would know more about the popping off than i would but it seems like it really started popping off around 2012 maybe in america roughly i don't know the exact time frame but yeah once it just, started showing down there like uh unedited or like un uncensored i Mm -hmm. I bet that's when it started to uh probably get popular because yeah it 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 had been shown around like different parts of the world and was like kind of popular and like or at least for fans in like countries you'd never guess like you know denmark or wherever like right yeah like what the heck but the states it wasn't really taking off in because i think it was still censored there but then once whatever that finally like the censors fucked off then it was right uh, sky's the limit yeah trailer park boys in all of its glory could be you know seen and yeah appreciated. yeah you can't you can't <laughs> censor ricky or jewel you can't censor anybody really in that whole show i mean no show had had done much like had i mean had pushed swearing like trailer park boys i guess there's definitely have been like probably the, obviously there were 
swears that had to like you know break the ice in different right. ways and like broadcast television uh and well but trailer park was on network television but um but yeah like like it, it was a whole new ball game trailer park boys like oh yeah swearing like crazy this everything is swearing yeah. it's like it's like censoring a rap song it's like dude you can't do that we can't even exactly, understand yeah. how funny it is some rap levels of swearing All right yeah. and uh was it really big in canada before it started hitting off in america or other mainstream markets oh yeah yeah it got popular here like right away basically i think it must have got popular in the first season because it wouldn't have like gotten a second season but i guess popular enough but then yeah like it didn't maybe pop off until like seasons you know two or three like, right when... did you did you start getting noticed around like a lot around where you lived no not really like my scenes were so few and far between um and you know sort of fleeting that like yeah mm -hmm. no it wasn't uh like it would happen now and then but no it, it's it wasn't like common right yeah you were a little bit like you were there in the beginning like season one or two but you really made a a star appearance i would say even as close as like ricky and julian almost where you were in every scene almost all the shows all the uh episodes or whatever i don't know when that started maybe episode or season, season seven or seven eight. yeah seven yeah uh yeah, so like all, all the stuff with like me dressing like julian and all the right. stuff in the yeah it, yeah it's crazy how many characters weren't even like real characters like jacob didn't really have a thing or a gimmick let's say up until around then and it's crazy how that can just happen because oh they're like hey we got this idea for this character we can just do that because it's a tv show <laughs> Yeah, the, the magic of TV. <laughs> right. Uh, so what was it like going from like a kind of a background character to to one of the main stars, really? Because you were in so many scenes. How does that work? Like, do they call you and say, hey, we want you to be more full time or? Yeah, something like that. Like somebody from like the, like a, an office called me up and. Uh, yeah, just would have been like, yeah, we got these I, like these ideas you want to expand your character are you you know open to doing that i'm just like yeah oh, yeah you know, sure. Right. and uh then they i guess they took it back to the writers room. Like, like i don't know if they approached me like before they had written much stuff or uh, i assume so and, and, and they would take it back and like start making things happen but uh yeah like i don't have an agent or anything so okay. someone just 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 would have called me up and like yeah asked me if i was uh but I, I, I recall it was like some like random person from an office. <laughs> right. <laughs> it wasn't like Mike or somebody important. It was just like some rando. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least like to me at the time, it was someone who was a rando. Maybe it's someone who I talk to all the time now. If right. so, they're watching. <laughs> yeah, don't, I hope they're watching. Me. No, yeah. Uh, what, what was it like going from, because I don't know how you, how involved you were at the beginning, like how often you were around, but what's it like going from there to like on like full time, acting in this show like did they say hey you're going to come in and we're going to film all your scenes and then you can leave or did they kind of film it categorically how it's going to go in the order of the tv show um yeah they like like in the earlier years i would just like gone gone to set you know for the you know day or two days mm -hmm. that had the scene or scenes i was filming and that would be it for the like for the season and then back to home and it, well, back when it started, I was living in Halifax, but then I moved to Ontario. So I, I was in Ontario for a lot of the, like the, the seasons. Uh, but then in season seven, yeah, I, I like went to live there for, you know, the, the full five weeks of filming basically. So they, like they, they got me a place in Truro, the town where they were filming. They even asked me if I would stay in, in one of the trailers, which I considered, but I thought like, oh man, like it might, I might live to regret it if like too many like you know who knows fans or people start to like show up to the trailer park <laughs> who knows what's gonna happen so yeah i ended up not uh not staying in the trailer where did i uh stay but uh i i, I kind of wish i had in a way that that would have been uh like, yeah just for the memories level. really right. getting the character <laughs> like yeah i live in character now and you said it only took five weeks to film what maybe a season that's the usual, yeah. Ten episodes they do in about five weeks. That's is not usual. long at all, you'd think. It's much shorter than other, like you know, sort of Hollywood level stuff, from what I've heard. But all my experience is Trailer Park Boys, so right. I don't have any any comparison. And it seems less really. Hollywood, 
But at the same time, you also got to Hollywood up to make it look non Hollywood, if that makes any sense. It's totally professionally. I mean, like in some ways, like the, the I guess it's it's a small crew, but it's uh, definitely a professional film crew. Like it's all union. Right. Like, like both the actors and the like behind the camera crew and set crew and stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah they, they know what they're doing. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm one of those people like, like, I don't know if you ever find it hard to see yourself on film, but mm-hmm. I, I often am like that. And so like, like after the first season, you know, seeing myself, I was like, oh my God, I, you know, I, I was so bad there. You know, I, they'll never call me back. But then they did. And sort of each, each year I'd feel that way, you know, more or less. But then, uh, and then, so yeah, like I was super surprised and, you know, like, you know, happy uh, to get my role expanded in season seven because uh, it was super cool to see just how you know how a film set works like being there yeah much more full time right for, for that you know five week period although really I was probably only there like a third of the time you know max um like there's so many there's a lot, lot there's uh, tons of scenes I wasn't in of course and there's yes, just so much going on like on a film set um but yeah it's a uh, it, it was super uh interesting to see how yeah these people like create like the interior decoration for example they make it look like a real sort of like you know crappy old trailer or mm-hmm. whatever uh or realistic you know sort of trailer living room there was sort of a retro style to a lot of them that might not be that like accurate to most people's trailers these days right but uh it was really good you know great aesthetic and you know genuine look you know like the, the random junk around from like rolling trays to uh you know like right all the shit that like set decorators do to make uh shit look real is is pretty impressive no, as, was, as, as one example of the you know the magic of set no it really is because i was telling my girlfriend last night or the night before we were watching the show because you know everybody goes through that like where you watch it from start to finish all the way through in like a couple yeah, of months yeah. but uh we got to the season where Marguerite has her bathroom completely demolished by Ricky because he's trying mm. to be handyman and he fucks yeah, yeah. it all up. But one thing I loved about the show is like three episodes goes by or something. And like, maybe we haven't heard about that situation. And then they go right back into it. Like her bathroom still fucked up. We still have a fix it. And it still looks like this. <laughs> Whereas in maybe other TV shows or movies, they would just gloss over it and have it fixed up already. And they moved on. But yeah, Terrapart yeah. Boys didn't do that. They kept the shit rolling. And it's just so funny. And, like, it makes the show that much better. And that scene is one of the greatest scenes of uh, Ultra Live Rock Boys, I think, where Ricky... Over a towel rack. That was a one-take uh, one take shot, too, I think. They didn't have any, like, resets for that wall to, like, for him to fuck up again. So it was, it was, right. it was so well done. <laughs> I was curious also, how how long does it take to film certain scenes like that? Like in general, like, do you have to just keep doing it over and over and over? Or is it a lot of it like one take? One take is rare, but a lot of it is uh, like, a f- you know, three to five takes. Um, sometimes it ends up being, you know, more, more takes than that. But yeah, like they, they try to keep it to five. I, I would say. <laughs> right. Based on my memory. How much of the show in general was just improv on the spot opposed to just straight the whole script? Like the superstructure is definitely scripted, but then they allow like 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 if lines for Jacob don't sound natural for me to say them, like if it's just, you know, whatever if if the words are arranged in a way that seems weird, I could totally mm-hmm. change it up as long as the meaning gets across. Right. The, they might, you know, give notes or 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 change it again or even change it from what's in the script themselves. But uh, the, the boys and like lots of the actors do a lot of ad-libbing, like uh, uh, all, the, all the main boys and, you know, John Dunsworth did a lot. Uh, so yeah, like, like they're, they're really good at improv and would often do a different like take on a scene in every one of the takes in a scene, like, you know, a different sort of, you know, joke punchline or, you know a, a different this or that so yeah it was right. it was uh, pretty impressive i would keep it sort of like just try to you know, find what seems right and just try to like do it you know not fuck it up <laughs> right you're like i'm trying not to fuck this up here i don't even know how i'm here but like you're, you're allowed to, to uh change things uh if you want to yeah like often it wasn't like you know stay with the script or else right and i thought was another thing that was interesting when the office kind of did this to a certain degree where they kind of break that fourth wall and they talk to the cameras 
or whatever they know mm. like they are aware that the cameras are there but you kind of forget about it sometimes and then ricky will be like come on man get the fuck out of my way and you're like oh yeah you forgot it's just so crazy yeah 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 this is that, that stuff in the early seasons uh maury i i, I always love those uh scenes like like where the sound dude gets shot or whatever or, uh right right the sound dude gets shot and it's sent to the hospital but like often they would like in general they were trying to keep the yeah like they didn't play that up much and like if the boom was in the shot just on some random scene they would like call cut and like get the boom right out of the shot. redo like, it like, yeah they weren't really like you know seem to be looking for those kind of uh things too much right i think the sort of style might have changed a bit and they didn't like i i have no idea like there's so much that must go on in the mind of a writer and director Right. Totally over my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I got I got no mind for that kind of stuff. That episode where they turned you red, where they were turning into an alien, and your hair was all falling out. Yeah. Did, so, did you actually like go to the hospital, and like, was that filmed at that hospital, or was that like a set, or that was a real hospital? But yeah, like they got permission to film there. Um, must have been in an empty part of the hospital. <laughs> it's just crazy. Like, like, yeah, how many people are actually around while this is being filmed? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Gosh, what was that? Was it an active hospital? Gosh, I, I, I don't know now. I feel it must have been like a part that they weren't really using, like for emergency stuff or for anything that they obviously wouldn't right. have crew anywhere. Yeah, sure. Trying to do shit in. Right. But it might have been like a teaching hospital or something. Yeah. So probably just hanging out. Um, doing like kind of whatever small shit or maybe remodeling or whatever um but yeah it's just crazy how how random people are just around everywhere because in like big movies hollywood they'll shut the whole block down like you can't be over here and they'll have like massive curtains up but it's crazy how real world this was filmed and it's fucking awesome yeah yeah they Um, know what they're doing those trailer park boys creators all right um, do, can you talk about how much money you were paying <coughs> at, at the beginning? Like when you were just like kind of filling in or just in the back, you don't have to, if you don't want um, to. How much money I made? Yeah. It was like the first, so when I was just like, like had it, like in the first seasons, at the, I would have been getting the basic actor rate. Um, you know, I'm not sure. I, it depends. Like as a principal actor, I think back in the day, like I guess twenty years ago, it was something like six hundred, or if you say five hundred bucks a day, and then you you also get an advance on that. I really can't remember. I'm I'm sort of guessing that might be similar. Like now, it's maybe still something like seven hundred. I haven't looked at my uh, at the actor rates in a while. It's funny but, that there's uh, actors' rates, like the actors' minimum wage or whatever. Basically, yeah, it's like the actor is like a union so any production in canada or or a lot of i guess the, like productions are either unionized or non-unionized but if and if they are they have to have union like you know actors and everyone's got to be a union actor mm-hmm. similar stuff with like all the all the crew uh, but there's also non-union movies and shows as well but uh like when i was first doing background stuff for that i was being like the pay was about Maybe like 120 bucks a day comes to mind. That sounds about um, right. Doing background now, you probably get about 200 bucks a day uh, under actor rates. Mm-hmm. It's like less. It's more like by the hour if you're a non-actor. So, uh, and then, but if if you got lines, then it's for some reason I want to say it was about 500 bucks a day like 20 years ago, like as the base minimum. Right. Uh, but it might have been less. Might have been. Might have been more. And now it's something like. Uh, I think something like 800 bucks a day I minute mean, like is is the base minimum uh like for an actra actor although for some reason i can't uh i can't like i'm, I'm not really sure <laughs> yeah yeah no how how do you even get into acting i know a lot of it kind of like you even said you were just kind of around and they said hey you want to be in the background of this movie and i assume that's kind of how it works with you know, Hollywood too, where they're just actors around and they kind of call whoever, uh, like, let's say I want to be an actor and I want to get into acting. How would I even go about doing that? Or, yeah, you know, I, I don't even know, like here in Nova Scotia, 
I'm part of like mailing lists. They're supposed to be for actors for like call outs for things. And almost nothing ever happens. Like everything gets cast before it ever. Like there are emails now and then, but it's like yeah, super rare. And it seems to be like nothing that, that I'm like um, eligible for in terms of like the you know age or gender or whatever the like role is. Right. Um, yeah, notice looking through your like kind of discography or your IMBD. Um, you don't do a whole lot of acting in general. Mm. I know you're involved. Yeah, I, I, I've done nothing else. And I don't like, I don't look for auditions or, or turn out for stuff like ever, but I do sort of like, you know, keep my, like, if, if, if the perfect role came up again, like, like not being a trained actor, I don't, uh, like there was one role they sent me, but then I, I didn't end up going for the audition. It was some like old, like fisherman dude, come, like in, in some creepy town. Mm hmm but I just like felt like doing it, I would be overplaying it and it wouldn't be convincing. Although who knows, like, w w you know, with some coaching, maybe uh, I, I could have done it. But uh, if it wasn't sort of comical, which this wasn't supposed to be. Right. I just didn't feel it was like, uh, it's just not my cup of tea. Like, right. You would feel like almost <laughs> Jacob in that episode or in that movie. Basically, basically all I can play is Jacob. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you're so used to playing that. You don't want to. Yeah, I feel that. And Jacob Collins is only like a slightly, you know, more awkward and dumb version of Jacob Rolf. You know, that's so funny. More or less. So no, it's, yeah, uh, it seems like it was like a pretty real character outside of they made Jacob as dumb as Ricky. So you know, whatever. But he was a goof. Yeah, like this the episode they woke up. They oh my god, dude! It's so funny that you were in this episode. Or like you were the guy, but they're like. Jacob, is that how you lay with my daughter? And you got those underwear on. Oh yeah. It's like, yeah. how did they even approach you with that? They're like, hey, we need to wear we need you to wear these underwear. Yeah, they like sort of approach it as if it's an option, like, oh yeah, I could do this scene. Like we like to do it like this, but like, you know, what do you think? We don't, you know, we don't have to. But yeah, you know, I'm I'm fine. Right. I'm I'm not too, <coughs> you know, you know, I guess I can be pretty self-conscious, but uh yeah, like in situations like that, I'm not, or at least on that day, or, or when I agreed to it, I wasn't self-conscious. <laughs> right, you're like, yeah, I spoke just enough today to be good for this, whatever. Well, like, you know, like they, they even had some other like sort of skin type, like like bikini briefs type underwear that I could wear underneath the like leopard skin, like like mm -hmm. banana hammock. But uh, you know, like, yeah, I, I didn't need like anything like that. I'm, I'm, I'm a professional, you know. I don't want to keep going on about Trailer Park Boys. But I do want to ask you about filming around Snoop Dogg. What was that like? It was definitely a lot of excitement on uh, on set. I assume he was actually smoking the real shit. <laughs> yeah, I felt like he sort of broke the ice for like real dope being allowed. Right. I well, would imagine it was a lot on yeah. set in Trailer Park Boys, but uh, it, it, it was when uh, Snoop was around. That's for sure. Right. I would imagine, yeah. yeah, there's no faking it with Snoop Dogg. He doesn't care one way or the other. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, no, they uh, they had to get like a big massive amount, like a pound or something. Uh, maybe it was like more than that for him and his crew while he was in uh, in the country. Jesus, imagine having that rider. <laughs> so, yeah, I know, we, uh, it, was, we uh, pound. It, it would have been amazing. Um, yeah, it was the stuff dreams were made of, that's for sure. It was no pre-legalization too, so like they got some like, you know, people in the, in the industry from like toronto to uh put together yeah some kind of like super cornucopia of weed right that's a crazy and a pre-legalization that's crazy <coughs> it was yeah excuse me i don't know how <laughs> how that all went down because we're kind of going through something similar where we got a, a rapper coming to our small hometown we had to deal with the police where we're like it's afro man i don't even know if you know who that is but we had heard of him for sure. He did that song because I got high. Okay, because... yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's coming to our small town, and we were like, they talked to the police. They were like, "Listen, we can't have our name on this and have him come to town and smoke all this weed and him get arrested." So, and they were like, "Yeah, whatever. We know it's his entertainment. It's whatever. He can do whatever." But uh, so the yeah. cops kind of indicated they wouldn't. Hassle right. Him? There was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. He's doing his thing, and I would imagine it was similar up there when he came, where it was like, "I was smoking." <laughs> well, I like definitely like the cops. You know, like on set when they're doing stuff, often there's cops around, like like guarding the public as well mm -hmm. as like the, well the cops that are on film would be like actor cops, right? Well, sometimes they have real cops, but being paid as actors um, when they're acting. But the cops would wouldn't get up up there getting pictures with Snoop um, a bunch. I I bet you know, and and all hyped about it. Yeah, did did what they needed to do. 
Um, so I want to just gloss over this really, really quick, but it looks like you were in a couple, a couple zombie movies. And I was even, I even read that you were, you were asked to come back for the second zombie movie because you were, he liked you so much in the last zombie movie because you were the last zombie on screen at the end of the movie, just kind of looking up at the fireworks or whatever. But what was it like being a zombie? How, how long do you have to sit there and make up for them to make you look like a zombie? What the hell? Uh, quite a while. Yeah, it's a, yeah like um, with all the prosthetics, is it makes, like first they would glue these prosthetics onto you, like a, maybe a gaping wound, a weird like nose cleft, you know, zombie thing. And then they would like, yeah, do all the makeup. So it would be like in between one and two hours, you know, depending on uh, if, you know, how close up you were going to be on camera. What was, what was the difference filming Trailer Park Boys and doing that zombie movies or both of them, I guess? Just having a gummy here to help. Uh, oh, you know, you're help, good. It helps with my uh, little cough that developed. Yeah. It's also a weed gummy. So it's, no, it's uh, where I am at 7.30 p.m. in mm. Nova Scotia. So it's uh, getting about, about that time to start. About the time to wind it down. down. Yep. It's, it's quite chewy, though. We have to give you a second here. Oh, Sorry. you're good. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'll just eat a gummy. No big deal. No, you're good. I was sick and I was I was acting like a baby. Like my girlfriend was taking care of me because I was like weak. I couldn't move. I was trying to do anything. It was just not happening. So you do what you got to do. I hadn't had like a, a illness like that involved myalgia, like all the aches and pains in like quite a while, like maybe 20 years or something. Mm-hmm. And man, yeah, I for, forgot how bad that is. Yeah, it's bad. When you're freaking like just your ligaments and like connective tissues fucking aching and like right. can't get, I, can't get I, comfortable. I felt like I had some sort of blood clots because it was just, it felt so terrible. I'm like, are my, is my blood clotting right now? Like what's going on? All right. I forgot what I asked. Uh, oh yeah. What was the difference mm. between those two uh, filming experiences? Yeah, it was uh, yeah, different in almost every way. I guess, <laughs> you know, on, on, you know, one, I was a background peon on the other, I was a you know, principal actor with my own little like dressing room, nothing glamorous, just a, basically a room the size of a, uh, you know, airplane bathroom, but, uh, all right. I mean, it was, it, it was fun doing the, uh, like doing the zombie stuff, especially at first, but then like, you know, long days, it was lots of night filming. So it was like sort of real slog. Mm-hmm yeah nighttime filming i'd imagine is not very great but d did you film it on set or was it more like a real location the zombie stuff was a, um, a lot like a lot of it was spent a lot of time down in this area of toronto uh called the distillery where they had this giant tent set up where we, we would just sit all the background zombies would be sitting in this giant like circus tent basically all right like a lot of us would like bring our own folding chairs in the morning so you have a comfy chair to sort of like like a like folding lawn chair basically right so you could you know sit back and be comfy and just like relax for the hours and hours that you're waiting between the times you're actually on camera all right yeah i would imagine there's a lot of shit going on because there's so many things so many people too i would imagine like a lot of zombies oh yeah a lot of zombies yeah, oh, hundreds. Shit. yeah. Oh, yeah. I couldn't imagine waiting, like getting your makeup done and then waiting for all of them to get their makeup done. Yeah, I, I want, it was super annoying, but like it, there's so much waiting around, like in film and TV in mm -hmm. any capacity, but like when you're a background actor in the in a like a movie like that, then it's like the most ever. Because yeah, they just uh you're like the least of their concern. They just want to have you around all right ready when they want you. So like they'll <coughs> you know pay the hourly rate or you know your daily rate right and have you there and don't mind paying overtime so like in a way you'd, you'd almost like it would suck to have like say you you got called in at the earliest you know time of the day for the mm -hmm. earliest makeup shift and in one way it sucks because you got to be there longer but on the other hand you're going to get a longer day in the end and exactly once you get over eight hours you start making overtime if you're part of the union so it's uh that's what like everyone's going for like oh yeah run overtime like All right oh, yeah triple overtime Woo. union money baby nothing wrong with that yeah um thank fuck so i know you do a lot of art in general and is it it's called floating world studio is that your art 
uh yeah that's my like yeah art like brand kind brand of. name I, yeah i also like i use a, a dirty burger print shop maybe for more trailer park boys themed stuff or mm -hmm. I, the, the, there's a couple of uh uh identities <laughs> brand identities maybe no it makes sense um, um, yeah, you know, yeah, my uh, my highbrow stuff and my lower brow stuff, um, right? So to speak. So when you do these, you do it for it's called Dirty Burger Studios, or that's combining the two, uh, right? Um, do you so when you do these art pieces, let's say if it's Ricky and Julian or Bubbles and his cats or whatever, do does Trailer Park Boys require you to pay pay some sort of royalties, or is that just kind of whatever? No, th they let me. Uh... Yeah, uh, just do it. Um, I don't make too much money off it. If uh, I think if I was if I was raking it in, um, they might well ask for a cut, and you know, right. which would be like which would be fair enough. Uh, yeah, if I was you know raking it in, All right? But no, it's not. A, it's a it's a tough slog as a uh, screen printer. Yeah. yeah, thankfully they don't uh, shut me down. That would yeah. be worse. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's stop talking about that right now. <laughs> Their copyright guy did shut me down, but then I talked to, then I like talk, talked to Mike about it and he was like, oh yeah, dude, you can do whatever you want. All right. Yeah. M Mike Clattenburg, the original creator told me I, I, that I should be doing like trailer park boys art back in the day. But then once he sold the rights to it, maybe he had no longer had a say in that. <laughs> All right. I'm not sure. No, that'd I be mean, cool. Fan art, like, yeah. Fan art though. It, I feel like it's a gray area. I, I don't know if it would be, uh, I definitely don't want to you know, get on the boys bad side, but uh, I don't know if it would be something that they could shut down. Right. I but, don't know. I didn't. That's why I was asking. Cause I don't know how that even worked. I mean, I, I you know, maybe couldn't call it trailer park boys art or something like that, like use their name or something. But uh, anyway, it hasn't come up. Hopefully it doesn't. Right. No. So that's good. So, but you do a lot of work. Thanks with... Mike. Thanks boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what do you, uh, what do you do? Full time, like what's your actual thing that you do pretty much full time with art? You just oh, I, I just make like make prints of my you know like both Trailer Park Boys and non Trailer Park Boys prints and and like sling them you know uh, over right. the internet and uh, like doing doing art sales or markets and that kind of thing. Right, so that's your full time gig at the moment. It is, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, where are you uh, mm -hmm. posting? I know you post on Instagram uh are you anywhere else yeah uh not really i could barely handle instagram uh <laughs> yeah what else even is there <laughs> All right. no. i mean facebook i know I, I barely use facebook beyond uh like as a messaging service um any suggestions what's what's the best uh place to post these days instagram i mean that's where i'm at too yeah. i mean i do post on facebook mm -hmm. but that's mostly for like hometown friends that don't mm. follow me on Instagram, but I don't take it like serious, like a business, but Instagram is pretty much it for me too. So if you know of any other places, you let me know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Folks have mentioned other, some other ones here and there, but I just don't have the, like, it's too much. Like TikTok. I can't and... add any more accounts to my like brain. I'll just like, right. Just, like run into the woods. And not come out. Especially the videos, because it's like, I can't crank out that many videos of myself. <laughs> That's too much. Oh my heavens! Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, how do you draw your art? Like, how do you come up with this art? Do you like do it on an iPad? I know some people do it that way, or do you? I draw? Uh, I draw up on pa uh, paper, old school. I usually just get high and draw. Like I've got some drawings. Right I have sketchbooks often, but I also just sometimes I just draw pieces of paper that are around. So just with like little like pens. Okay. You know, uh, like sometimes I'll, I'll I'll do pencil pencil first. That was a logo for a band, like an idea. Mm -hmm. They didn't go with that particular one. Okay. Um, but yeah, like you know, illustrations, cartoons, and then on the computer I'll uh, work on the composition and like fix up lines, add detail or whatever. And uh, so, how do you? Figure out the different layers or, you know, like the different colors and then isolate the different colors into different layers, with, right. with which I uh, expose the screens. Are you familiar with screen printing as a yeah. Uh, process? Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. So you take it from hand drawn and then you upload it to your computer. How do you get it from your, from the piece of paper to the computer? 
just take a picture of it like on my phone or you know, any like it doesn't take much because it's just a black and white line drawing in photoshop you can even if it's a low resolution image you can sort of like increase the image and make it higher resolution without uh compromising like the detail that's crazy do you have like a tripod or something <laughs> you take the picture with so it's like pretty much perfect or no 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 you want good lighting so to, to get a sharp exposure right so like yeah like like a bright room or or going out in the sun is a really good way to do it but uh in, in low light a tripod would help for sure that's crazy though yeah and then you like finish the coloring or the lines or whatever and then you yeah. print that from there so like once the image is like all looking good and color on the computer, you mm -hmm. gotta separate like every color uh has a different like uh um stencil or screen. So you gotta create those different stencils or what are gonna be those stencils. So you gotta like isolate every color into a different uh a different layer. Like for example, so this right now I'm working on this uh this bigger version of my of the two birds stoned at once. Mm -hmm. Like here, here it is with that. Uh, two okay. layers the bottom one's a rainbow layer in this case okay right here, and i'm doing some black and red ones next so what's a rainbow in this one i use the same screen with just red ink to uh, okay create this layer and with all my because of all my careful planning in photoshop this is my next screen and so you might be able to like anticipate when i print you know this with black ink over this it's going to cover certain areas and okay it, it's just be... so crazy, like the whole process, because I know it, like how it goes for T-shirts. I didn't know that you could do that with like art like that. Yeah, so it's the exact same thing for T-shirts. They use like it'd be a slightly, it'd be a different mesh count and like a different right. kind of ink, probably. But uh, yes, yeah, totally same idea. It's like a fancy stencil where you can get really fine detail. Damn, that's wild. So you got like the whole setup where you got like the four machines or whatever. Or you just got like one thing or no for uh for you know, let's rotate this. Okay. Um, because paper doesn't move around the way uh, t-shirts do, like the t-shirts have to stay in place and not move with while well, all the different colors are being put on it, but paper can come and go. It'll maintain its like structure. Right, right. So this is all you need to do. Uh, That's not <laughs> bad at all. Uh, paper. You put the screen into these hinge clamps and you clamp them down. And so the screen goes like this. Okay. And fall down in the same place. And you can boop, boop, boop. Right. Yeah. It's a, it's like a square. So you just got the measurements right. Yeah. It'll work. Damn. That's legit. Oh, oh get the light back here. Dang the lights. <laughs> um. So you said you were high. You probably you probably do acid. I mean, I would imagine. I saw, I saw you do shrooms, maybe. <sighs> um. How often do you do art and on while you're on psychedelics? Not, uh, I mean, these days, all I've really been doing is microdosing. And so, but, you know, even when I microdose, I haven't been doing a whole lot of drawing recently. Um, I, I, it sort of comes and goes in waves. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't draw on psychedelics much. I, I find it too, like, too hard. But on, like, on a microdose, if it's a truly small dose, then, yeah, then you know, it sort of adds to the, uh, like, creative you know, melange. I definitely prefer to draw like, like, you know, high than not high, but like, it's usually weed. Right. Yeah. Me too. But yeah, you know, I, I haven't explored yet yeah, drawing and psychedelics much recently. Yeah. But like certainly when I was younger, when I would try to like, you know, like draw when I was like flying on acid or something or shrooms, it would just be like, not good drawings at all right and i feel like it would be the opposite where it's going to be like the craziest thing ever but every time I'm, <laughs> I'm tripping i'm like there's no way i could create good art right now <laughs> like i don't draw but like i just do music and i'm thinking how do i write a dope song on acid i'm like i couldn't do that there's no way and it's like what you said is it comes and goes in waves it's so weird how similar like a lot of creative types in general are where where it's music or comedy or writing or whatever drawing it didn't maybe all come out at once and then you smoke a little weed you get the juices flowing mm -hmm. a little bit but yeah it's crazy how you might have a writer's block for a year even you haven't wrote anything in a year and then all the best ideas you've ever had come to you within a night you're like what the hell yeah. it's so weird how that works um yeah. when's the last time you started like when's the last time you really were drawing 
Oh, uh, no, I mean, I went to Ontario last month and I wasn't really, I didn't, I didn't do any drawing when I was there. Like I was on the road doing other stuff. And so I, I just wasn't on the radar and I got back, that was early September and I got back a couple of weeks ago and I just haven't drawn since I got back. Like I was oh, being okay. that busy with other stuff, like right. now that I'm back. But uh, so, I mean, I guess it's been a couple of months, uh, probably. Right. I was doing, what was I doing most recently? I was doing just like random burger drawings, just like fucking around, having fun, doing like burger themed. I, I don't know okay. these come through well Yeah, that's to, really good, yeah. Got your glimpse. Uh, there, there's a burger on a ferry. Oh, my God. Oh, look at that one's a little side of this. Some dude spying a tasty burger. <laughs> it's like, okay. That's dope. <laughs> There's a... Oh, my God. <laughs> That's so funny. Just random. Uh... It's crazy. Like, I haven't done a big... Uh, like Back earlier in the year, I, I did a bunch of drawings for this kid's book that I made. But yeah, like, I haven't done a big drawing project in the last like six months. It's crazy how different creative types also can are usually like really good at one thing. Like you're really good at drawing. And I assume you spend a lot more time with that than like, you don't act that much. You don't really do a lot, but you do creative stuff, but you really like the drawing. And it's weird that I do music and there's, I could write a song now, like whatever, but there's no way I could sit there and draw. You know what I'm saying? It's so weird. I couldn't just sit there and draw because I'm not good at it or whatever. I guess anybody could learn, but it's just weird. Like you said, seeing yourself on film is weird. But I don't really care too much, even though it's weird at the same time. Hearing your voice and watching yourself is like, bro, can we turn this off? Uh, I don't know what that had to do with anything. I'm just ranting about weird shit. Yeah, no, I I, I totally concur. I, I feel that way. Um, uh, as we were talking about, but hey, you should try drawing. Pick up like getting a nice pen would be a place to start. A pen that you you know, a good pen. Want to uh, a, a good pen. Like talking about art and psychedelics, like it could be really fun to sort of draw or you know play with like you know ink on a page when you're high, but then when you go back and look at it later, it's just All like, right. And you know, but, similarly, I bet you know playing music might be fun to play with instruments, but it's you know usually probably not going to be like oh wow, you know, like that that recording you made last night high on acid, it's like, right? So so dope. Although I bet I mean I'm sure like like Jimi Hendrix must have played on acid. I've seen some people where they said they played on acid in interviews. I'm like, how? how I think some folks can do it and like, you know, actually create stuff. You know, maybe, you know, I'm sure people draw and paint like flying on acid all the time and create right. amazing stuff. But for me, it's just like, you know, what classic thing comes to mind where you're going to do it and you know, just get like, start looking at the page and forget what you're even there to do. Right. The page starts to like, you know, you ever have a bad trip? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what was that like oh i mean it, i've had a number of trips that that were not good <laughs> yeah like you know various degrees of bad uh but the our real bad trip it's a long story but i was uh yeah i took mushrooms 19th birthday and uh ended up in the hospital <laughs> that's not good <laughs> no why did you end up in the hospital you were just scared or had... It's a long story. Yeah, yeah. I I thought I was gonna stop breathing, uh, like once like once I passed out, which was imminent, and I right. made my friends call an ambulance for me. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a long, uh, embarrassing story. Yeah, I've been there. I've only had... I, I, I didn't die. It was a mistake calling the ambulance. Uh, it's always a mistake. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> especially I on drugs. I, I, I knew it was always a mistake, but at the time I was so like, yeah, like, worried I was gonna just like pass out and stop breathing. Yeah. I was on shrooms, paranoid. Yeah, fuck that. So what happened when they got to the you got to the hospital? Did they shoot you up with some shit? <coughs> Actually, I feel they must have, or, or very well could have. They, they put me in a bed and put a bunch of monitors on me and just like let me lie there until I like came down, basically. Oh. Like, dude, like don't do this again. You're wasting your time. <laughs> oh my god. That's so awkward. I was like, Yeah, really sorry. Yeah, I know. I'm so so sorry. Yeah, I feel like I look at bad trips now. It's like I feel like <laughs> nobody ever has bad trips but i've I've only had like two of them but the first one was the first time i ever got 
I did ask it. My friend was like, "Hey, you want this?" It was like a piece of paper. I'm like, "What is that?" Because I always asked it. I was like, all right, whatever. Long story short, we got chased by the cops. It was not a good time, but I don't oh, think wow. I don't think I had a bad trip because I got we didn't get arrested or anything. But I felt like I had a good trip, even though it was a bad experience. Oh yeah, yeah. That wouldn't like I mean, bad trip is probably different uh, different types of them I would expect. But that's something you know when you're like. You get super anxious in certain ways and like, you know, like paranoid. And even even the term bad trip, I mean, it could just be like a you know learning trip. Like Right. No, the bad trip but, I uh, I definitely remember having was at the gathering of the juggalos, if you know anything about that. Only enough to uh uh know that like yeah i could see that that uh instigating a bad trip it was not a good time i took double what i normally take and i'm like and i haven't taken it since i'm like i can't ever take this again i think i've got what i needed from it i'm good so now i just have no purpose but yeah that was a wild experience um we kind of got through most of the shit i wanted to talk about do you remember how the iconic bam came to life by chance it was just in the script damn that's crazy so yeah mike uh mike clattenberg he he uh i assume he invented it because then after because because when after season seven when he left it was never in the script again having the, like the, the bams were only around that one season although it's like yeah like my character's catchphrase right it's so it's iconic at this, this point day. right everybody's like bam and your website was like bam dot something. I can't remember what um, it was. That's one of the short, yeah, shortcuts to it. Bam dot ca. Oh yeah. B that's B triple A M dot C A people. Hell yeah. <coughs> oh man, my coughs. <clears throat> you got those coughs. Um, I'm gonna start wrapping this up, but at the end of the podcast, this is called But You Have a Real Job. Cause in the creative world, a lot of people, whether even an entrepreneur that's doing entrepreneurial shit, they still might get that question. Yeah, but do you have like a real job? And it's like, so I hate that question. But that's why I called this podcast. But you have a real job. I bring on yeah, people yeah. that might get that question. I'm curious, what would you say is a real job? Um, yeah, gosh, try to get philosophical about it. Eh? We're really philosophical <laughs> over here. I can't even pronounce it. That's how good it is. Yeah, I mean, you know, it has to do with like, doing stuff but you know making money is also i guess part of it but i mean i guess you have to, uh for what is a real job is that the question yeah in your opinion i guess you know whatever you do with your time that like sees some kind of results in some way might be a sort of high level definition of a job from uh from my brain it doesn't need to be necessarily bringing in money, but maybe it does at least a bit to qualify as a job. Yeah, right. but yeah, sort of besides the point. Yeah, but yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I can't, I can't do a like a day. I don't know if I'd be able to do a day job, day type job again. Like when I did work a more of a regular type job, it was in restaurants recently, so I'm not like exactly day job, day or whenever job. You know, like right crazy schedule restaurant style um yeah that's, I, I totally didn't answer your question very much there but... no you're good everybody has their own opinion but no i feel the same that's like i feel like everybody's got the wrong way of making money or having a job i don't or whatever. Like, do, I, do i have a job like i i, I you know jobs suck i i, I sure think it's jobs for working with someone else but of course it doesn't need to be i guess right you know, work job is a job an official sort of work all right. And people always ask, you got a real job? I'm like, what do you mean? I have a job. I was like, but, and then there's that, you know, it's just like the creative people in general, but everybody, <clears throat> I feel like you would make less money and work more if you enjoyed doing the thing you were doing. Like you would quit a job making a hundred grand if you hated it. If you got a job that you love doing for, let's say 50 grand and you got to do what you loved, at least that's how I look at it. Yeah. That's probably like, uh, I, I I do agree, but I sometimes fantasize about like like taking a break from all this the art hustle and just like doing a regular job, you know, as, as a break from having to like you know do all this. Although I think after doing that for a bit, I'd be like, okay, get me out of here. Just like I'll I'll, I'll take the you know the cons with the pros and do get all right the art stuff. 
that's the sacrifice we make as a creative <laughs> people is you have to work way more hours than a nine to five. It's like, yeah, I quit working a nine to five. Now I work 24 hours a day. Yeah. But, basically for what would be minimum wage, like at the right. end of the year. You know, but it feels more like more, <laughs> it feels more satisfactory at the end of the day than going to a job. I, I totally, I, I totally do appreciate it. Although sometimes, yeah, it's easy to like forget that uh, right. and take it for granted. Yeah. All right, Jacob, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. Um, we talked about your art a lot. Where can people find your art to purchase it? Oh, uh, check out my website at, uh, it's a floating world studio or the dirty burger print shop, but the shortcut is bam.ca B A A A M dot C A and, uh, Instagram floating dot world dot studio or Jacob Collins TPB are my two, uh, channels there. Boom. One Find more it. art, one more trailer park boys. There you go. Find them there. What's your Instagram handle again? Uh, Jacob Collins TPB. There it goes. Or uh, floating.world.studio for art stuff. Boom. Go find Jacob Rolf there, not Jacob Collins. Jacob Collins is his Trailer Park Boys name. It's funny. Also, I want to make one last note is like some of the characters in Trailer Park Boys use their real name like you did. Just for, do they come and say, hey, just, you just use your real name or do they have the character written out? They as script whoever? It. It's all, yeah, like it's in the script that way. Seems to be a lot of the people who aren't like trained actors already, like Corey, Jacob, mm -hmm. Sarah, Lucy. I can't think of anyone else offhand, but uh, that's know. cool though. But that was Jacob, guys, and we appreciate you listening to the podcast. I hope you have a good rest of your day. This has been But You Have a Real Job, and we are out of here. Have a good one, guys. Peace. But do you have a real job?